A very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you from wherever you are joining. Uh, welcome to this webinar where we would be talking about securing requests with Keycloak and Istio. So we would be diving into the world of Kubernetes security. Uh, before we do that, a quick round of introductions. I am Atul Priya Sharma. I am a CNCF ambassador, and I also work as a senior developer advocate at InfraCloud where I deal in cloud native technologies like Kubernetes, Istio, and have been exploring observability of late as well. Outside of work, I am a foodie and love doing road trips. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Shaibas Patan. I am working as a site reliability engineer at InfraCloud. Uh, actually, I started using it for cloud native CVS back and now I help our clients to build robust, secure, and reliable infrastructure using cloud-native technologies. Uh, quickly getting into the agenda of what we plan to cover in this webinar. So we would start by giving an overview of the various security options in Kubernetes. Uh, we'll then dive into Istio, and we'll see how authentication and authorization works with it. Uh, we'll also look at request level auth authentication and authorization, a uh, quick look at JWT tokens, and finally into the demo. So to start with, we know that you know Kubernetes has become the operating system of the cloud. And uh, with the complexities that our application and infrastructure have, it's very important to have a robust security measure in place. So we'll start by discussing some of the existing security features that Kubernetes has. So RBAC basically helps us control who can access and perform actions without uh, you know, accessing your Kubernetes clusters. So you can think of them as bouncers at an exclusive club. So it allows you to define fine-grained permissions for user groups and accounts. Uh, this is one of the very popular ways for securing access to your clusters. Next one we would like to discuss about is pod admission policy. Uh, you can think of it as your vigilant security guard outside your building. And uh, so when a pod is created, the policy kicks in and validates the configuration and ensures that only authorized folks are allowed access to your uh, pods. And lastly, and most important is the network policies. And if you are dealing with networks within Kubernetes, uh, you would have come across network policies. These are basically like virtual fences that safeguard your network. So we can create logical boundaries that allow only authorized communication. These three are uh, relatively the basic options, yet important options that Kubernetes provides out of the box. Uh, however, there are a few shortcomings of these particular native options. So especially, you know, looking at it from a point of view of network policies. So the first one is that network policies focuses only on controlling the traffic, and it does not provide a mechanism to force your internal traffic uh, going through a common gateway. Uh, apart from this, it also doesn't provide any feature to tackle with TLS related configuration. So if you are going to handle anything related to SSL, certificate management and encryption, these options don't quite uh, provide these features out of the box. So uh, that's where, you know, we need some tool that can help us deal with all of this. And that is where service mesh comes in. Uh, service mesh such as Istio or Linkerd, it provides a dedicated infrastructure layer, uh, specifically designed to handle secure communication. So uh, in a typical microservices architecture, you know that services communicate with each other extensively. And uh, it's very important to ensure that all the communication that is happening is authenticated and secure. So apart from, you know, the regular features like traffic shaping, uh, you know, load management, as well as traffic routing, uh, most of the service meshes also come with security features. Uh, some of them include native support for MTLS and JWT authentication, which is basically, you know, you can offload the authentication uh, from your application, from your cluster uh, to Istio or Linkerd, whatever service mesh that you're using. Uh, it also gives you an over observability layer so you can control and have a visibility over the network traffic. So in a way, it also helps you secure uh, and monitor traffic within your network. And lastly, it also gives you some fine grain access control uh, over your network and the requests that are coming in. So uh, this was pretty much about uh, what service mesh can do when it comes to security. Uh, we will now look at how Istio can help us in this regard. So let's see uh, Istio's uh, authentication and authorization, how Istio 
uh, provides the uh, out of the box authentication and authorization for your services in your Kubernetes cluster. So basically, Istio provides two types of authentication. One is peer authentication, and another is a uh, request authentication. So so peer authentication uh, allows uh, like define how traffic is get tunneled to your workloads in your mesh. That means like uh, Istio uh, peer authentication controls the mutual TLS traffic between your services in your uh, in your mesh actually. Request authentication policy allows you to define the mode of MTLS which should, you are going to be used in your plus uh, in your mesh actually. So there are uh, three types of MTLS modes actually. Uh, one is permissive, one other is uh, strict, and the last one is disabled. So by default, the mode is permissive. That means the client is sending a request to a server service, and that uh, client service don't have any uh, certificate with it. Then uh, it will allow that. It basically it will allow plain as well as uh, MTLS traffic. So that is what uh, we can control through the peer authentication. And request authentication are used for the end to end user authentication. Like whenever an end user make a request to your services with uh, uh, any credential attached to it, so is your uh, request authentication is responsible for validating those credential. Uh, it uh, most of the case or uh, is your only supports the JSON web tokens which we abbreviated as JWT. So uh, request authentication verifies the attach JWT to your request and uh, decide like whether the request identity is authenticated or not. And when request get authenticated, it forwarded it for the authorization. So uh, next part of this process is authorization. So Istio provides the authorization. It's a simple of the CRD, a uh, custom resource authorization policy and lets us control the workload to workload and a work uh, end user to workload. Uh, traffic so we can define uh, multiple policies for our services in our mesh and control like how our services can authorize the end user or the service which is communicating from the same cluster and there are uh, like uh, basically three types of action which we can perform using authorization the allow deny and the, we can provide the custom actions as well by default, the action is allowed. So whenever we create any authorization policy in our mesh, so uh, without any action, so it by default get created with the allow action. It is recommended to start with all deny in your cluster and uh, start you uh, start creating some allow uh, policies for authorizing the request coming from outside your cluster, outside your mesh, or the traffic coming from the same uh, same mesh, or we can use authorization policies in multi-cluster setup as well because uh, this geo works very well with uh, setting up a multiple cluster. In this diagram, we can uh, clearly see like how traffic flows uh, when we uh, introduce a STO service mesh in our cluster. If you see the traffic is uh, uh, like the traffic between services is uh, MTLS. Like if you see the green lines that showing uh, traffic is going from one service A to service B is uh, uh, MTLS and it's secured and the traffic from uh, end user to your services uh, coming through the ingress gateway and that JWT uh, with the JWT plus from ingress gateway to your backend server it is again MTLS. So end to end your application would be uh, secure with MTLS and uh, proper authentication and authorization mechanism. So let us get into the request level authentication and authorization. Uh, before we dive uh, dive in, it's important to understand why something of this sort is actually needed within your uh, cluster. So uh, request level authentication in Kubernetes cluster serves multiple purpose. Uh, it allows users to access data securely. It grants programmatic access for various applications and facilitates reliable communication between various services. So uh, what you see here are different use cases that we have listed uh, where request level authentication might be required, rather is required. So, you know, it basically is required to allow users of your application to access data on your server uh, through your through a, through a browser or over a mobile phone app. Uh, it also is uh, required to give your end users, both people and programs, programmatic access to data managed by your application, uh, which can be through means of APIs or some endpoints. 
and lastly to let other services that make up your applications infrastructure communicate with each other so these are some scenarios where you know request level authentication is required and uh, before we deep dive into the demo and the crux of uh, today's webinar let us quickly go through what jwt is so uh, json web token is an open standard that defines a uh, compact and self contained a uh, way of transmitting uh, information between parties as a json object and uh, it is a very popular user authentication standard as well so this token is made up of essentially three components you have a header you have a payload and you have a signature so uh, in this diagram is a basic structure of a json web token so you can see the header uh, which defines the type of algorithm and the type of token so here you can see the algorithm type is hs246 and type is jwt uh, the payload essentially has the uh, meat of the token so uh, things like the name the issuer what's the role the issuance time uh, these are the things which we define in the payload and lastly is the signature uh, where basically we can use a combination of our public and private key to sign the entire uh, token. So the JWT token is uh, basically consisting of these three particular uh, components. And uh, in today's webinar, that would be the crux of uh, the demo that we have. Yeah, so Istio allows us to validate JW, uh, JWT tokens uh, using the request authentication, which is a custom resource, which we have to get, which we will see how we can get the request authentication in the demo. So request authentication will validate uh, whatever the access token we will attach to our request while making uh, API calls to our applications API endpoints and validate uh, it with a key clock because we will be using key clock as our authentication provider in this demo and once that uh, jwt get authenticated it will get passed to the authorization policy and authorization policy uh, verifies whether uh, it is the authenticated identity or not if it is authenticated identity then it will uh, allow us to access the api otherwise we will get a rbac access denied uh, error and as you can see in this diagram it is the uh, like high level uh, of work, uh, like a flow of our, uh, how our application workflow will look like. So um, we will make the API call to our booking for application with the uh, uh, JSON web token, which we will generate from key clock and we pass attack it as an authorization bearer. And uh, that request will go through the request authentication and authorization policy. and. If all the things identified that a JWT which we have attached is valid, then we will get a response, uh, like a 200 response. Otherwise, we will get a 403 RBAC access denied. So let's see how this actually will look like in the demo. Uh, so let's get started with this, uh, with today's demo. And uh, for today's demo, I'll be, I'll be using a uh, local client cluster with uh, Metal LB installed on it, uh, which will allow us to create a load balance the service because we would need a load balancer for STO ingress gateway and a uh, kick lock service. I have uh, deployed one simple application, uh, which is a book info application. Uh, that application exposes two endpoints, uh, one for adding a book and one for uh, viewing the book, which we have already added into the database. So this two like this is the application with it and this is the database which uh, i'm going to store the book information i have already set up a sto on this local cluster uh set up with a demo profile and installing a sto is fairly a simple step you can follow the official documentation of sto how you can get started with sto and i have also installed the key clock uh locally uh in this cluster so setting up a Key clock on Kubernetes is also simple. You can follow the get started with Kubernetes guide on key clock official documentation. So let's see how our application actually look like. So uh, let me first make an API call to my get. Uh, I'll first extract the IPs of uh, key clock and STO gateway because we would need it uh, uh, quite frequently in, in this demo. So I have did this. Let uh let us make a api call to get hooks api endpoint and see what we get 
So as you see, we got an empty array, means there is no books added. So let, let us add one uh, sample book or uh, to the database. If you, if you see this, means book is got added. Let us check by making, making a good book. Now we can see we have added one book. Yeah, but re in real world, uh, you may have your application exposing an API, which is uh, uh, which allowing uh, your users to store a data into the database, sensitive data, and you don't want uh, anyone can access those endpoints. It should be uh, accessed by the authorized persons only. Uh, let's say in a, in our application example, uh, we have to. Uh, restrict our add book call, uh, add book API. Uh, in this case, uh, in this way, only the authenticated user can only be able to add a books, and uh, the get book uh, API would be available for public to view all the books from the database. Let's see how SQO help us to do that uh, with the, uh, any authentication provider. In this case, we are using Keyclock. So let's first set up a Keyclock. I have already installed the Keyclock. So let me let me grab the IP of Keyclock uh, service load balancer Keyclock E1 and while login as an admin. So so in Keyclock, uh, you can there is a very good documentation of Keyclock. You can go and read about how Keyclock works. But other uh, the features Keyclock provides like uh, OAuth 2.0 or SSO or SAML. There are lots of features which we provide. And in Keyclock, everything comes under a RIA. So there is a master RIA uh, by default. We have we will create a new RIA. So let me create a new RIA. I'll give it a name as a SQL. Uh, I'll keep it simple for the sake of this uh, demo. Then we have to create a client. Uh, we will create, create an open ID connect client, uh, which will allow us to request a JWT and generate a JWT. Uh, so the client type would be open ID connect. I'll give the client ID again as STO. So I have to keep it fairly simple actually. So let next we don't have to change anything here. Anything here. Yeah done we are done with creating a client so now create a user so we would use this user to generate uh, access token and uh, make a api request to our application so i'll create a user as a book admin so this is a fairly simple step uh, because for the sake of demo, we are keeping it simple, but you can explore what all things you can do with the key block. So, so I have created, uh, let's create this user. Uh, let's set a password for this user. I will set it as an admin123. And so again, don't uh, use such a uh, weak password. So now we are done with uh, key clock setup actually. Uh, that's all we have created a real in that real we have created a client and we have created a user uh, so let's see if we are able to generate a token or not all the token if you see in point to call when we want to generate a token so here we have given the client id as is given the username which we have created and the password and the client type. Here we go. We are able to generate a token and we will use this access token to make an API request to our books application. So let's see how this will look like in action. Yeah, so for that, first we have to create a SQL request authentication to validate that access token which will attach to our request so let's uh, see how uh, how this uh, authentication policy will look like so it is fairly simple here we have just 
created uh, match rule so where to apply this authentication policy so here we are saying like apply this authentication policy for all the pods which are running with the label book info and we have given the JWT rules. So here we have given the issuer from where uh, we are generating JWTs. And here we are using this JWKS URI. It is nothing but JSON web key set URI, which uh, export uh, its public key on this URL. And this queue will go there and verify the, as we discussed in slides, this queue will verify the JWT uh, signature over this URL. So it is fairly simple. Uh, you will uh, find more information about request authentication on Istio's official documentation, how all this works. So you can go and check out that. Now let's uh, apply this authentication policy, request authentication policy. So, okay, so now authentication, request authentication policy is created. Now let's try to add a new book. This time we should not be able to add a book because we now created the request authentication. Yeah, but that is not a case here. We are able to add book and that's because we don't, we have to uh, use authorization policies to restrict access to authenticate a request only. We have authenticated that request, but we have not restricted the access. That only the authenticated request only able to access that uh, API, which is add book in, in our case. So let's see. We have authorization policy as well. So let's see this authorization policy. So as we discussed, we have two endpoints. One is get books and another is add book. So get book would be publicly available. So we have added only two. If you see, there is no from rule here. And for the add book, Sorry, now we have a from rule as well. So that from rule defines that the request is coming from the authenticated identity. And only it will allow. So here we are using star, but uh, you can find credit put if you have multiple JWT issuer or uh, for the multiple endpoints. So you can uh, use that mul uh, combination of issuer and the subject which you will get into the JWT payload. So as uh, we showed in the uh, slides, there were there are three parts of JWT: the header, the payload, and the signature. So in a payload, we will get a, who is the issuer of that JWT and what is the subject. So you can use a combination of issuer and subject to fine grain your access control. Actually. So here, uh, for the sake of this uh, demo, I am using a star. So let's see how. Let's apply this authorization policy and let's see what happened after so the authorization policy is created now let's try to add a new book okay this application don't allow us to add a similar book but if this authentication policy is working we should get our back access tonight and here we go we are not able to add a book now. Let's see if we are able to list the books or not. And we can see we are able to list books, but we are not able to add books because we have a restricted access to our add book API. Now let's let me clear this. Now let's generate uh, JSON web token and use that uh, token okay we are able to let me store this token into variable access token variable and now i use that uh, access token to add a new data and here we go we are able to add a book using access token we see the new book is added yeah so it's fairly uh simple actually adding uh authentication authorization for your application but uh it may get get difficult if you have a multiple
multiple endpoints, multiple authentication providers or issuers. So in that case, you have to be more careful. Yes. Yeah, so that is the end of our demo today. So that was a wonderful demo by Shebaz. Uh, we saw how we can use Keycloak to generate JWT tokens and then authenticate our request using Istio's request authentication. So uh, to sum it up, you know, proper authentication and authorization are essential for securing any application that you might have. So Kubernetes native security solutions are not enough for a production grade security. So you might have to, uh, you know, mix and match a couple of tools to create your custom security solution. Uh, and Istio provides a seamless solution for controlling access and simplifies request level authentication and authorization as we saw in the demo. And uh, it's fairly easy to use an external authentication mechanism like Keycloak, uh, which can help offload authentication from Istio as well. So uh, this approach makes the system more robust and secured. So that's pretty much it for the webinar. Uh, we would like to thank you for joining in. And uh, we hope that the webinar was insightful and you took away something new from this webinar. Uh, you can reach out to us for any queries and any further questions. So uh, thank you so much and have a wonderful day.